How's it going guys? My name is Blaze and this is Big D Sports. Thank you very much for giving me a chance clicking on this first video. I truly appreciate it. With that being said, I wanted to make my first video on the Lions, talk about the draft picks, my thoughts on them, and what this means for the whole regime going forward. I'm only going to cover the first four picks, just because after that it's even more guesswork than these four are, so that's all I'm going to stick with. Other than that, I want to get right into it, so let's start off with Jeff Akuda. And I know a corner at three is not exciting, it's not really flashy, it doesn't know it's not what we wanted. And if you listen to 97 with the ticket, plenty got you all riled up about how we were gonna take two a third overall and we're ditching Stafford and all that. Those rumors kinda got squashed early, so I personally expected to take a coup at three, and it's not a sexy pick, but really in the end it kinda makes sense. It's kinda weird for me to say that a cornerback at three makes sense, but if you look at the drafts, how there were no trades in the top 12 or whatever that line was of no trades in that first round, for the first time in however many years. Clearly there wasn't a market for trades. Now I'm not taking all the blame off Bob Quinn for not being able to trade down or anything because obviously there's always more you could have done. But at the end of the day, there weren't trades. We got the player we wanted at three. He should be a solid pick. I can't be mad at it. This is a very typical Bob Quinn pick here. If you look at it, he has a very high floor. But on the flip side, he does have a very high ceiling as well. I think he could be a top three cornerback in the league within the next five years. Now I remember seeing videos of him all around on Twitter and some highlights him, you know cooking a reporter something stuff like that and everything I saw of him I loved the only thing was in the back of my mind I was like I really don't want to take a corner at three but at the end of the day we took the best player in a position of need so I can't really be mad at that the only thing you can I guess be mad at is that we took him so high and if, I mean if you want Derek Brown sure you can make an argument but me personally Jeff Okuda is fine at three it's not exactly what I wanted but I can't complain because it's not far off if Jeff Okuda is anywhere near a bust Bob Quinn and Matt Patricia are both gone now, moving on to my favorite pick of the draft, DeAndre Swift. What a damn steal. I should clarify here, this is my favorite pick just because of the pure fan in me. Football-wise, I would have much rather used a high draft pick on an offensive or defensive lineman, which is what we really needed. But fan-wise, how can you hate on DeAndre Swift? I mean, you already got all these videos getting leaked on Twitter of him working out with Stafford and ESPN's kind of grabbing onto him as one of their favorite players for the upcoming year. And you know how they, you know, pick their players. It's kind of nice we got our own player for once on that list of ESPN's favorite players. And it's even got to the point where Carryon Johnson's kind of getting shook about it and replying back on Twitter, some needless stuff. So it clearly DeAndre Swift is in Carryon's head. Clearly he was a solid pick. Challenge Carryon. If Carryon's unhealthy, as he always is going to be, we have another RB that can be an RB1 if we need him. I kind of look at our running back situation as a 1A and 1B. I don't think Carrion's a three down back and I also don't think a rookie DeAndre Swift is a three down back. I mean if you look at it maybe there is a reason he slid to the second round. I don't know but at the end of the day it's kind of hard to say oh Lions are the smartest in the room even though they look like it at this point. And like I mentioned, I really wanted a high draft pick here for O lineman, D lineman, something within the line, but I can't be mad at it. And at this, with the value you're getting at this pick, this is just such a great value pick for Quinn. And it's not, it's one of those picks where you're like, why is he still here? How is he still here? Of course, we'll take him. We'll figure out lineman later. I wish they did, and I'm happy that they did, but I could not be more happy about this pick than I am right now. And again, just to kind of close this thought off, it's another low risk, high reward pick for Quinn. All he has to do is be an okay back and you're like, okay, we have a second round back that's serviceable. And at the high end, he's gonna be a top 10, top 15 bet running back in the league for the next five, seven years. We got him in the second round. Very low risk and very high reward at the end of the day. Now I think the third round is where Bob really, really got some value here and picked up those valuable linemen that I've been looking for earlier in the draft. To start off, we got Julian Aquara. Oh my God, what a steal. We got another first round talent, and this time in the third round. How does that even work? How are we the ones that are getting so lucky this year? I, I don't, don't understand. understand. I mean, for me, he's another high reward guy with very low risk. I mean, if you take him in the third round, personally, I'm not expecting a lot of third rounders to be good, solid starters for a team. And maybe it's the Lions in me. I don't know what it is. I just don't expect a third rounder to come in and start right away and be very impactful. I really do think Julian Aquara is that type of player that could really do that. Now I realize that the injury is probably the reason why he dropped from the first round talks they were kind of talking about way earlier on in the season and fell all the way to the third round. But at the end of the day, if you look at the injury, it doesn't seem like a reoccurring injury. It doesn't seem like a scary one to me. And honestly, this is another great value pick I cannot be mad at. And like I said before, this is what I wanted. I wanted to get the inside, the meat of the team down. I wanted to get strong in the trenches, and this is what we're doing. This is the first time we actually decided to fill a need on the line. We go D-line with an obvious pick here. It's one of those picks here like, how did the team right in front of us not pick him? Or the team right in front of them? Or the team right in front of them? 
and they just fall into our laps. Kind of like Swift. You, know, you kind of go to that second day and you're like, okay, I guess he's gonna go 33rd. Wait, he didn't go 33rd, 34th. And you're just kind of sitting there like, okay, fine, we'll take him, but it, it doesn't make sense why he's still there. And this is another one of those picks where you're like, thank you for falling into my lap, I guess I'll take him, no brainer. And this is one that's a no brainer and also fills a need, which is why I really, really love this pick. I mean, on top of that, the whole brother connection is really cool. It's always cool to see, you know, brothers on the same team in the NFL. I mean, what are the odds in general for one of them and then both of them, and then they're on the same team? Wild, cool story there. All in all, I guess, final thoughts on this pick. Great value, great need, great story. Love it all. Thank you, Bobby, for picking another obvious pick, it seems like. Now the next pick and the last pick I'm gonna talk about is obviously Jonah Jackson. And the, kind of the reason I wanted to stop and cap it off at him is because he's someone that I'm not fully sure on. I know you guys probably aren't fully sure on. I know the scouts aren't fully sure on. They're saying, hope, I mean, hopefully he's a day one starter. I would love to see a day one starter in the late third round. It's and again, it fills a need at O-line that I really, really wanted to have. I kind of wanted it earlier in the draft, but I get with all those other picks that I love so much, I couldn't be mad at any of them. Now we're finally at a place where we can draft an O-lineman, give Stafford some help, hopefully. He seems to be more of a pass-first guy, not much of a run blocker. I mean, I can't be mad at it. Again, it's third, late third round. You're going to have some value drop off, and there's going to be more holes in this game than Jeff Okuda. But at the end of the day, he was first team all Big Ten, third team all American. It was his first year at Ohio State. I always like getting players from big schools. I don't know why. I just do For some reason in my brain it says, hey, this player's good. But at the end of the day, I can't be mad at the pick again. I feel like it's a very good value for the awards that he's gotten, how he worked his way up to Ohio State and started right away. Had a pretty good season. Like I said, more of a pass blocker, not much of a run blocker. It's okay, you're gonna get these holes. You're gonna get these holes in the late third round pick. And if we have the right O-line coach, could not tell you that we do. I mean, obviously if Stafford stays healthier, then I'm gonna give the O-line more credit next year. But at the end of the day, fingers crossed he's good. And I kinda wanted to cap it off there with players and my thoughts on them. Cause after that, it kinda gets fishy. Then you, re it's really, really guessing game. Here is like, I can read reports and I know like, hey, these are this is a top three round guy. People actually did some research on him. I mean, I'm not personally going through and watching all 100 of his games in college and high school and saying, oh, here are what I think are his weaknesses. I'm reading reports. I'm watching some highlights, some videos. I don't know everything about the player. These are just my thoughts. Again, if you agree, disagree, whatever your thoughts are, hit in the comments below. Would obviously love to hear you on the first video. Would really appreciate it. Now I kind of wanted to talk about, like I said at the beginning, what this means for the regime going forward. Quinn, Patricia, Quinn, Trisha, whatever you want to call it what this means for them going forward, what this draft kind of says, what I feel like it says that they're saying to us when they pick these players, and also what it means as like the success that they're gonna have next season and moving on if there's a moving on to do with them. Now I think it's clear to me, some people will say that it's unclear to them and they weren't sure and they don't agree, they disagree, whatever. To me, I think it's pretty clear to say they were told, hey, you need to win now. The reason I say that is that Bob Quinn did not go for any project picks in these first picks. It was all about trying to get land starters, trying to land value, trying to land people that can help him win now. And I think what this says for the regime is that they were really prioritizing value and just quality players. Just get as much talent as you can, maybe over need in some cases. I guess it's just interesting seeing a team with a win now demand and a win now draft. We were literally the third worst team in the league and we're talking about win now next year. I don't know. So other than that, I don't really have anything else of value to add to this video. On this topic at least, I have plenty of other value to any other topic, don't worry. If you have any of those ideas that you want me to talk about, you wanna discuss, check out my Twitter, check out the comments below. I will reply back. I will be talking to you guys on Twitter. I'm on Twitter a ton. Don't be afraid to follow me there. It should be down here somewhere. So yeah, like I said, I'll give you some of my ideas that I was thinking I'm probably gonna make videos on at some point. But if there's any other ideas that you like of these or any other ideas that you wanna see more than these, definitely reply. I'll do those first. But just kind of give you a list of where my head's at of ideas I was thinking about making in the first place would be a couple other ideas I had were where the Pistons stand, whether they would come back or if they didn't come back with the whole NBA hiatus. With all that being said, that is it for me. And last but not least, I really do appreciate you guys giving me a chance clicking on the video and actually make it this far. So if you have, I hope you liked it. Please like, subscribe. Like I said before, comment down below. Thank you guys. Peace.